Welcome to Larry White Outdoors. Today we're on Lake Martin, right out of Ellick City on the Tallapoosa River. And uh, this is my nephew, Chad Lackey. And uh, we're gonna go try to catch a few crappie today. Uh, deep water crappie, probably. The water's probably in the, in the low 60s today. It's a nice, calm day. Everything looks good out there. And uh, Chad said he'd been catching a few crappie down here. So uh, we're gonna see what we can do. What do you think? I think we can catch them. Well, if you think we can catch them, I do too. Let's ride out there and see what we can do. Alrighty. <clears throat> These trees uh, are scattered out right in this area right here. So you kind of random cast all the way around and bump one every once in a while and pick up a fish out of it. It's easier to make a fishing hole if you spread it out over a wide area like this. It's easier to find it when you come back looking for it. I'll tell you, it's tough to get right on this stuff. And I really don't like to run over it with a motor before I fish in there because I think that may scare some of them out of it. <clears throat> to get in a general area and just sort of random cast around there, you come across one every once in a while. the wind's gonna have an effect on us today. It's gonna try to push us right on top of everything. Oh my goodness. There you go now. Don't be letting him get off now. There he is again. He came Go back, back and he wanted some more. <laughs> Get over here on the other side and turn the boat around. Maybe we won't, wind won't blow us right on top of it. Mm. Oh, yeah. Now, this marker I put out there, <coughs> if, if you run over a top, particular place you want to fish, you need to put a marker out there where you'll stay in the general vicinity of it, but you don't want to put the marker right exactly on top of it because if you do, it'll be in the way when you're fishing. So usually I'll run on past it about a boat length before I put the marker out. And that way the marker's out of the way. And I still know where the top is. Sometimes you catch a lot of small fish scattered, and then you'll hit a spot in there that's got some big ones in it. Even when the big ones grab it, though, you don't really, can't really tell they're on there. If you don't get them that first time, they're yeah, gone. That's right. The bite is just so subtle 
sometimes you don't even really feel it. You might see your line jump just a little bit and it might be heavy when you pull it. That's why these little rods and four pound test line is so important. I think four pound test line is critical in having a good time crappie fishing. Bigger, the bigger line, you know, you may get more jigs back with it, but you can't cast it as far. It doesn't settle at the same rate of speed that, that this little bitty line does. And, you know, I get a lot of jigs back with that four pound line when I get done. And if you use a, a weedless jig, uh, or a, a thin wire hook on the jig head, It'll bend. You can get a lot more jigs back. You can also get a fish on there that'll straighten out a, a wire hook if you get too rough with him. But if you got four pound line on there, you kind of have a tendency to, to take it easy and enjoy the fish a little bit more, not just skid him across the top of the water. Finally, talk one out of that tree. Please. He ain't gonna be tall enough. No, he's a little bit on the short side. There's another one. You get one? Yeah. Well, we're getting getting closer now. They'll just get a little bit bigger. Yeah, that's not feel too heavy. He's, well, he's, he's big enough. I believe, I believe he's going to be big enough. Maybe. Close. Some specs that make him look bigger. Yeah. <laughs> now, you, uh, you told me you feel like they're hitting that jig on the fall more than, than the horizontal pull. Isn't that right? Yeah, they're hitting it. I wouldn't even say on the fall, they're hitting it on a on a tight line, just letting it swing through the water. When it bounces off a limb. Yeah, just don't even reel it or anything. Just keep that line tight and let it swing back towards the boats when they seem to be grabbing a hold of it. Slow, tub. slow, slow is the name of the game, isn't it? Once you think you're fishing too slow, slow it down just a little bit more. Now that's four pound line. Let, let's that jig fall and act pretty natural in the water, but you also lose a lot of jig, but then if you're not getting hung, you're not in the right place. side of the tree. No, that's a good one there. Well, good error. Yeah. Now that, now I'm telling you, that one's down in the limb. I had to get down in there. Get that. But I, I'll be satisfied with a few of them. He was down in the limbs. A lot of times when you got a high pressure like this in this bluebird sky and very few clouds, when the pressure gets high, the fish go down. And that'll push them down on the bottom or it'll push them down in a really thick mess. They'll get down inside that cover. Now it's supposed to rain this afternoon if the barometer starts dropping a little bit and the pressure gets lower, these fish may come up out of these trees and they'll bite a lot better this afternoon. Maybe. Nothing's a sure thing with fishing. The 
except that was another bite. Oh, that's another pretty, pretty decent one there. Well, I'm all in that limb, so I should be catching one here in a minute. I might have to put this one in the, in the chute there. See how he, he fares on the nine inch limit. Oh yes. He got right, nine well, and a half. Lay dead in them brush piles. Okay, we finally found the hole in the top where we needed to be. That's the way crappie fish is supposed to be, but they need to be bigger than that. Yeah, yeah they gotta be bigger than that, don't they? How about dumping that other one in the, in the box there? Is that another? I believe that's, I believe I got his house out there. <laughs> well, the limb's right there where I am. That's that tall limb sticking up you're talking about, because that got hung as soon as I threw it out there. Got the jig back? I don't know. Yeah, partly. Bent the hook a little bit. There's some pliers you need them? Nah, I'm bent with my finger. It seems like sometimes when you start catching these fish, you kind of get them turned on, get the rest of them excited. I know a lot of times when I'm jigging a spoon and I see a lot of fish on the graph, I know I'm jigging the spoon right in a water fish and they just won't bite and it won't bite and it won't bite and maybe I'll snag one. And that, that snag fish swimming around down there, it seems like it gets the rest of them fired up about biting and then the rest of them will start biting sometimes. Usually if you can ever get that first one to bite, maybe he's got to show the rest of them what to do. There's something about a falling bait that fish are attracted to, and especially a slow falling bait. If you use too big a jig head and too much weight, and the thing just goes zipping right to the bottom, a lot of times they don't pay any attention to it. But if, it, if, it's, a, if it's a small, lightweight jig, and it just flutters down. Maybe it looks more natural to them or something. I use a 16th ounce jig quite a bit. You ever heard somebody, you know, you always run into those old men that all they do is crappie fish. They'll tell you that crappie won't look down. Won't they, look down? They all, yeah, if you, yeah, if you fish them, blow them, you're not gonna catch them. You got to be fishing above them. How do they know that? Well, I don't know. I know if you're fishing with a with a float, a stand-up float, and you got it too deep, if the, if the minnow is under the crappie, and he'll pick that minnow up and he'll go back up to the level that he wanted to be. So I know they'll go down and do that because the cork will be standing up. And instead of the cork going under, it'll just fall over in the water. Hmm. When it falls over, he's picked the thing up and brought it back up. Well, he could be below it to start with. Just want to go up higher. Well, he could be. 
if it wasn't for this speculating about the fish. Well, we'll, we'll interview some of these fish we'll, after. Yeah. <laughs> see what they say about it. Yeah, we'll give them a little interview there. <coughs> you know, I, I, I would tell you that uh, maybe one particular color is better than another color, and, or maybe one particular uh, size jig is better. But when you come in in the afternoon after a day's fishing, you talk to people at the marina, and they'll say, "Well, all I could get them to hit was a was a green jig with a red eye." And another guy says, "Well, the only thing I could get them to hit was a solid white one with a pink eye." And you'll get about three or four different things that, that these people are convinced that's the only thing they would bite that day. But in reality, that was the only thing the guy fished with. Yeah. When he caught a fish, he, he never changed again. Well, it kind of makes you wonder if that fish, from what people say that, you know, surely they're not swimming up there and checking out what color his eyes are before <laughs> yeah, he eats it. I wouldn't think so. But I will tell you this, there's some colors that, that definitely do overall work better than other colors. Overall colors. Uh, but I wouldn't say that was the only thing you can catch them on that day. But a black and a chartreuse is is by far my favorite color for crappie fishing. And a June bug and chartreuse and a, a pumpkin seed and a chartreuse. I, let, I like a little bit of chartreuse mixed in there with them. That just uh, seems to set it off real good. And they, they probably bite some of those colors better, better on certain days than they do other colors, but that's not the only thing they'll bite. They just don't bite the others quite as readily. And I don't know why they would change from day to day to a different color that they would prefer. Because I promise you there's nothing down there that's this color, a, a black and chartreuse or a June bug and chartreuse, I don't think. If there is, I've never seen it. You know, you can catch these. Uh, you can catch these crappie in a deep treetop like this, out in the middle of the lake, where somebody's put them out here. You can catch them out of blowdowns like the ones around the bank here, if they're in deep enough water and if they reach out far enough. And you catch them around piers and stuff. If you just absolutely don't know where to go, if you can find some piers that got some water. And like I said, this time of year, the water's down so low that a lot of piers don't have but four or five feet of water. These these fish here are coming out of 15, 18 feet of water, and they're right down close to the bottom. Hey. Hey, well, that's another little baby one. Yep. That's okay. The baby's got to eat, too. Well, folks, that's a few ways to catch crappie on Lake Martin in the cooler months when the water's down. Uh, you, you can fish the deep treetops. You can fish the blowdown trees. You can fish around piers that have got cover on them. But the main thing is to find enough water depth that, that'll hold these fish. Now, like I said, these fish are in 15, 18 feet of water now, and uh, they'll get deeper than that as it gets colder. So you just have to kind of keep up with them. And if you put out some treetops and, and trash piles and things to fish in, if you do any winter fishing, you need to put some in some good deep places that'll, that'll hold fish in the winter time. So until next time, I guess we'll see you somewhere on the water. This is Larry White saying thanks for watching.
Obrigado.